Welcome to our webinar hosted by Quality Assistance. I'm Arnaud Delobel, R&D Director at Quality Assistance, and I will be your moderator today. First of all, let's start with some practical points. The talk, entitled Automate Your Maps Characterization Workflows with 2D LCMS, will be presented by Dr. Claire Butré, R&D Scientist at Quality Assistance. During the 30 minutes communication, you will have the opportunity to send me your questions by typing in the Q&A dialog box of the webinar interface. I will collect them and Claire will answer at the end of her talk. Let me now present today's speaker. After an engineering degree in chemistry obtained from the National Graduate School of Chemistry in Mulhouse, France, she did her PhD in the Laboratory of Food Chemistry of Wageningen University in the Netherlands, where she specialized in the identification and quantification of enzymatically digested peptides by LCMS. Then, during her postdoc at Wageningen University, she worked on in vitro digestibility of proteins, and she also worked on several LCMS method development projects for different applications, such as quantifications of Maya reaction products. She joined Quality Assistance in 2018 as an R&D scientist, and she is involved in the development of new analytical techniques for the characterization of therapeutic proteins with a strong focus on mass spectrometry. Today, she will present the application of 2D LCMS to automate monoclonal antibody characterization workflows. Claire, the floor is yours. Thank you, Arno, for the introduction. So indeed, I will present today data we obtain on our 2D LCMS system and the presentation is entitled Automate your maps characterization workflows with 2D LCMS. Let me first uh, introduce or mention something about Quality Assistance, our company. Quality Assistance is a contract research organization located in the French part of Belgium, close to the French border. We are now more than 200 employees dedicated to provide pharma companies with analytical services. We have the chance to have all our labs on one side, facilitating the logistics and the handling of the samples. We work in compliance with the current regulation. And to give a number, we, for instance, dealt with 37 projects related to antibodies in 2020. So 2D LCMS system at quality assistance. We use um, Waters H-class and I-class modules coupled to a Xivo G2XS QTOF. And the analysis is performed using the software Unify and we work in a fully compliant uh, GMP environment. Our system is equipped with multiple hard cut mode and the at column, uh, sorry, at column dilution technology. And we will come back to these uh, technologies in a few slides. The benefit of using a 2D system, well, obviously this allows the separation on two dimensions or two columns, and this also allows the analysis of samples by MS when using non-compatible MS um, techniques, separation techniques, such as SEC, for instance. And we can imagine using orthogonal method on each dimension. So uh, in more details on the step of the analysis, this is a first dimension chromatogram. Uh, and uh, we can imagine that we would be interested in those two fractions. The steps to have these fractions analyzed on uh, 2D, on sorry, on uh, MS, I will describe now. First, uh, the, the system, it has three pumps, uh, one for the dimension one, the second one for the dimension two, and the third one is used for the trap columns. Uh, so we first operate the system in classical one dimension mode to inject the sample on the first dimension. So the flow in blue here on this slide comes from the QSM, goes to the injector through the first dimension and to the PDA, which is our detector for the first dimension. And this is for the first minutes of the chromatogram until we reach our fraction of interest. At this moment, one of the, once we reach this retention time, the valve uh, one of the valve would switch position to position one, and the flow is now sent to the trap column. The compounds are retained on the trap column, which is usually a reverse phase space column. And the, the rest, so the compound is trapped on the column and the rest of the flow is sent to the west. During this step, we also have a flow from the pump used for the trap column, so the, the from the pump called at column dilution, because this flow will 
uh, dilute the flow at the entrance of the trap column in a way that there are less salt present on the trap column together with the trapped compound. At the end of the elution of this compound of interest, we go back to the dimension one setup where the flow is sent to the PDA. Then we reach the retention time of our second fraction of interest, so we switch back to position one. And we now send this second fraction of interest to the trap, but now we have to use a second trap column because, well, of course, we don't want to mix two fractions. And this, the position, the, the choice of the trap is done with another set of uh, valves, so we select which trap we want to use. And in our setup, we have the possibility to fit seven trap columns, so this is why we can talk about multiple hard cutting. And compared to other systems, this is efficient in terms of time because with one injection, we can directly collect seven fractions. So once the first uh, dimension elution or the gradient is finished, the fractions of interest are trapped on the trap column. So until seven fractions, as we just discussed. And at this stage, we can decide to further dissolve the fractions. Uh, especially if we have worked with the first dimension where there are a lot of salts in the uh, mobile phases. For this, for this desalting step, we send the flow using this at column dilution uh, pump and we send this flow directly to the trap column. And we can just choose the position of the trap column we want to flush to desalt. At this moment, the compound of interest is still uh, trapped on the column. Finally, we can analyze the fraction by MS, so on the second dimension. We use the third uh, pump system and we switch the position of the other valve, the left one. So the flow goes through the trap column, back flush this trap column and send the compound to the dimension two column for a proper elution and for detection on the MS QTOF in our configuration. And if we would have several uh, fractions or several trap, we need to repeat this uh, second dimension gradient as many times as there are uh, fractions. So this is it for the for the setup. Let's go to the application. I will uh, discuss with you the setup of online disulfide bridge reduction, and we will uh, discuss two workflows. The first one is automate the analysis of maps present in complex mixtures. And the second one is automate the characterization of maps at the subunit level. So for the one comment before uh, going on to the uh, reduction uh, is one issue we faced at the beginning of the project. So in, for first uh, tests, we uh, sent the antibody to the trap column and try to elute it on the second second dimension. But if you see here, the, the peak is uh, of a bad quality. It elutes over a few minutes. And this is when we had the trap at room temperature. Then we decided to try to put the trap column at the 80 degrees, which would be the normal condition for reverse phase elution. And now if we both have the trap and the dimension two column at 80 degrees, dimension two column is also a reverse phase column, then we have a nice uh, eluting peak. So this means that we need to work at high temperatures. Now the reduction. So the idea is he here is to um, reduce the sample or the, the antibody while it's trapped on the trap column. For this, we've prepared a solution of one millimolar TSEP in a acetonitrile neutral water mixture. And while the compound is trapped on that column, we send this flow of TSEP. And then the compound are eluted on the reverse phase on dimension two, reaching the MS detector. Here we do see two Peak, so corresponding to the LC and uh, heavy chain, light chain and heavy chain, but we see that there are multiple peaks in each uh, fraction. And this is independent of the temperature. For all temperature, we would see multiple peaks. And if we look in details to the um, mass spectra, you see on the left the uh, row data and you see different uh, star charge state profile. And if we deconvolute this, um, these masses, these row spectra, you see on the right hand side the deconvoluted spectra, and you see that there is a 
difference of two data between each uh, spectra if we go from top to bottom. So this indicates that there are more or less disulfide bridges reduced. So in other words, they are not all reduced. So the uh, intramolecular disulfide bridge are not reduced both for the light chain and for the heavy chain. And this was only the example for the light chain, but it's exactly the same for the other one. And we tried different conditions of the TCEP uh, condition. So we increased the concentration and we increased the duration of the flushing time. But in all cases, we had these multiple peaks indicating that the antibody was not fully reduced and that there were remaining intramolecular bridges. So at this stage, we decided to change reducing agent and we chose DTT. DTT was not our first choice because it requires a specific pH to be active, while as you know, TCEP is a bit, has a bit less constraint. So to um, solve this, we decided to solubilize the DTT in a solution of ammonium bicarbonate, so the pH would be close to 8. And then, as we did above, we injected Omira directly on the trap column and sent the flow of DTT through the trap. And again, illusion uh, on the bioresolve reverse phase column on second dimension. Here, there is only one peak for each light and heavy chain. And if we look at the spectra, we can identify the two expected chains after the convolution. So in black, you see the light chain and in red, the heavy chain. And here, all the sulfide bridges are reduced, both inter and intramolecular ones. So this is a setup of the um, disulfide bridge reduction and this, we made it successful. Another point of attention when working with DTT is the stability. Usually if we work in tube, we prefer to prepare it fresh. So here we try to use it over 24 hours. And as you can see, if you compare the top and the bottom chromatograms, MS chromatograms, the signal with fresh DTT is equivalent to the signal obtained with the same DTT solution 24 hours later with a complete reduction. So we assume that overnight runs are possible and that means that we can analyze a number of samples without interruption. So let's move on to our first workflow, which is automate the analysis of maps present in complex mixture. The aim for this method is to enable the characterization of maps present in complex mixture, so this could be, for instance, uh, in-process samples. For this, we use an immobilized protein A column to purify the sample from the solution. The elution is based on a step gradient, where in the first step we use a buffer, sorry, a buffer at neutral pH to bind the, the antibody and clean the sample. The second step is the elution, which occurs at acidic pH. And here the outcut is obviously the antibody. This is an example of a chromatogram uh, obtained after the dimension one, so UV chromatogram. And this one will be sent to the uh, second dimension. So this is we, what we have here. You can see on the left the uh, detailed conditions uh, for this setup with a, a neutral buffer and an acidic buffer for the step gradient of the protein A HPLC uh, column, dimension one. Um, We use a bioresolve uh, reverse phase column for the trap and the dimension two column, as we discussed before. And here you see that if you inject um, like something like five microgram of antibody, there is a risk of overloading. So we have to work with limited amounts. And here, so this is uh, the top chromatogram, the black one. And then we tried one microgram Umira and we had an improvement in this uh, tailing. Finally, we also saw that if we do not use this desalting step, so this additional flushing to remove the salt, then the peak would uh, be a bit better. But on the other hand, if you see the spectra at the bottom, the, desalt, the, the mass spectra is not of a good quality. So these were the preliminary observations and we had to optimize to finally uh, reach conditions uh, in which uh, desalting conditions of 10 minutes at moderate flow would give a satisfactory result in terms of chromatography and uh, 
good quality spectra, uh, a mass spectra with the optimization of some MS parameters. So here you have an example for uh, 0.5 microgram Umira, the chromatogram, the raw spectra, and we can deconvolute. So the deconvolution is possible, meaning that the quality of the spectra is acceptable. Furthermore, in the development steps, we also try to uh, inject Umira present in a regular buffer or diluted in water and present in a cell media. And what you see here is that, well, basically there are no differences uh, depending on where the sample is uh, diluted in. So this suggests that the technique is suitable for samples present in complex mixture. And this was, of course, the illusion on the second dimension. So there is no influence of the medium on the elution of the antibody. To go further with, with this and for detailed analysis, we implemented the reduction step in this setup. So the reduction step we discussed in the first part. And uh, so still using the protein A column on the first dimension and the bioresolve on the two trap and uh, dimension two column and uh, with this additional flow of uh, 10 millimolar DTT while the compound is trapped on the trap column and a desalting step. And here we do see the two light and heavy chain as we discussed in the first part. And if we look at the spectra, we can um, annotate and identify correctly the light chain in black, the top uh, uh, row and the convoluted spectra and the heavy chain in red for a 0.2 microgram Umira injected. And here, uh, the additional remark is that we have to work with limited amount of, uh, of antibodies because if we would work at 0.5 microgram in this example on the top a chromatogram, you see a clear overload of the, of the column. So limited amount of 0.1, 0.2 microgram are needed to obtain a good signal. So this concludes um, our first uh, part, our first workflow, where we saw automated sample preparation of antibodies for their characterization by MS at the intact or subunit level when present in complex mixture. And we have an automated process uh, in GMP compliant UNIFI software. At this stage of the development, we did not have the opportunity to work on real in-process samples, and we would be happy to start a collaboration to analyze your samples on this setup. So please do not hesitate to contact us. Um, the second workflow now is, uh, sorry, automate the characterization of maps at the subunit level. Quick reminder on the IDS uh, enzyme, so uh, which is commercialized as a fabricator by Genovis, for instance. So this enzyme cleaves the antibodies below the hinge region. Hinge region, sorry. Uh, this gives the two subunits Fab and FC. And if we uh, use a reduction, if we reduce the disulfide bridges after that, we obtain three. Uh, type of subunits of roughly 25 kilodalton each. In this workflow, we worked with this IDS enzyme immobilized, immobilized on, a, on a column, so the fabricator uh, HPLC column that we use on our first dimension. We first worked with PBS as element for this first dimension for this column, but the results were not satisfactory for all cases. So we finally moved on to using ammonium acetate as buffer for the dig digestion and elution through the fabricator column. And here's an example of a chromatogram, UV chromatogram at the output of the first dimension. So the proteins are eluting from this column, but we need the second dimension to, to go into details. So this is what we have here. So if we use this HPLC fabricator column on the first dimension, and again, a uh, reverse phase for the trap and dimension two, here we use a map pack uh, reverse phase column from a thermo, but we know that it also works with a bioresolve column. And uh, on the dimension two mass spectra, we see the two expected species, so the FC and the FAB. And this is the example of uh, Yumira, Yumira here. 
And if we look at the spectra, we confirm the presence of the two expected species. So the FC, which is roughly 25 kilodalton, and the FAB, which is uh, 97 kilodalton in uh, red on this picture. And as we did before with the other setup, we also included the online reduction step in the workflow. So with the other conditions remaining the same, except this uh, flushing of the trap column while the compound is trapped with the DTT flow. And we obtained three peaks on this uh, mass spectra, on this, sorry, chromatogram, mass chromatogram, the FC, the LC, and the FD. And here it's uh, another um, uh, antibody which is used, it's nivolumab. And the presence of the three chains was confirmed by MS once again. In green on the top, you can see the FC, which is 25 kilodalton, and you see the different uh, glycoforms. The middle chain is the uh, light chain of the MAB. And finally, at the bottom, there is the FD, which is also almost 25 kilodalton. Uh, so as the automated sample preparation is working well, we set up a small case study in which we stressed uh, nivolumab at two different levels by incubation with uh, hydrogen peroxide so in order to uh, produce some oxidation and the stress was stopped by addition of methionine. And these samples were directly injected onto the 2D LC MS system, so without further sample preparation. And this is the chromatograms for uh, nivolumab online digested with the IGS enzyme and separation on the second dimension. So this is uh, using the conditions we discussed just above. Uh, for the FC peak, we see an increase, or we see the, the formation of a peak in front of the main peak, so for the FC, which corresponds to the formation of these oxidized species. And if we go to the highest level of uh, hydrogen peroxide used here, we even see the formation of a second peak, which means that there are double deoxidized uh, species formed. And if we inject the same samples, but this time including the redu reduction step with DTT in addition to the IDS online digestion, we have the three uh, expected peaks, so the FD, LC, and FC. And here as well, we see the formation of uh, a new peak, which corresponds to oxidized species. Then in the software, Unify, we automated the identification of the different species. Uh, so here it's zoomed on the species related to the FC, which are the most interesting in our case, because this is where the oxidation occurs. And directly from this uh, identification, we can have the software calculating the, the percent of oxidized species. And this is the example of uh, oxidation, but in practice, we could have this done for any other modification. And so here in this example, we would see um, that there is something like 10% uh, uh, oxidation in without treatment and up to 70% when we use, oh, sorry, there is a, when we use 0.2% uh, hydrogen peroxide, there is a small typo on this slide, on the level of uh, H2A2 used. So to conclude on this uh, workflow, we have seen automated sample preparation with IDS digestion, where we can obtain two or three species if we use a, if we include a reduction step. The process can be performed automatically in the GMP compliance software. And from this process, we can have an automated determination of the extent of modification of one or several uh, critical quality attributes. And we are already reaching the end of this uh, presentation. So we have implemented a 2D LCMS system equipped with a multiple hard cut system and at sorry and at column dilution technology. With this system, we can analyze by MS compounds which are separated on non MS compatible techniques. We can uh, have the characterization of maps at the intact or subunit level, and we can also characterize maps which are present in cell culture media. All this is performed in a GMP compliant, compliant environment with a qualified equipment and also a GMP compliant software. Uh, so here I presented data with uh, antibodies, but it would be possible to do the same uh, things, same steps with ADCs. 
so I would like to thank uh, Camille and Arnaud and also uh, Isabel Francois who helped us with this setup. I also thank you for your participation and your interest in this presentation and I would be happy to answer your question. Uh, you can always contact us later on for more detailed information or to discuss the analysis of your samples on this system. Thank you. Thank you, Claire, for your clear and interesting presentation. Thank you all for your interest. Uh, don't forget that you can still ask questions using the Q&A dialog box on the, on the interface. So different questions were asked during this webinar and we are going to comment some of them. Others will be answered later by email if we do not have enough time to cover everything. So uh, first of all, Claire, you talked about multiple hard cuts. Is it possible also to use comprehensive to DLC? Um, well, that's an interesting question. It's in principle possible. It's a powerful technique. However, it's uh, a bit more complex and it needs a specific software, which are probably not available by uh, current uh, providers. And um, it might not be robust enough for using a GMP environment. Okay, thank you. Um, second question, in your conclusion, you mentioned the possibility to, to analyze ADCs. Uh, what kind of information can you expect for, with these kind of workflows for ADCs? So for ADCs, you could have the molecular weight determination as you saw for um, MAPS, but you can also imagine uh, the drug distribution uh, uh, sorry, um, the, the DAR could be calculated from the drug distribution and this would be the main information, yes. Okay, we also have a question about uh, the future developments that uh, you could have at Quality Assistance in 2 DLCMS. Do you have some, uh, some ideas of what could be developed in the future using this kind of uh, technique? Um, so now we have the possibility to analyze uh, uh, MAPS at the subunit level. So we saw the example of following the oxidation. We could imagine to set up a type of MAM, multiple attribute monitoring a setup in which we could follow several of these uh, critical quality attributes. So the oxidation, the glycosylation, and uh, maybe even the imitation. And this would be a good, uh, a complete analyze, anal analysis of the, of the maps. Okay. And so maybe a final question. Uh, do you have the possibility to use other enzymes in the first dimension? So yes, now we use the IDS enzyme, which uh, is uh, commercially available. There is also the possibility to, for instance, use uh, immobilized trypsin to work at the peptide level. This would also be interesting in it. Okay. So Thank you, Claire. Uh, you have answered all the general questions that were asked during the webinar, so more specific questions will be answered personally by email within the next few days. So once more, we would like to thank you all for your attendance. Please note that this webinar will also be available on demand within a few days for all participants. And of course, feel free to contact Quality Assistance for any additional information or for any requests for analytical work on our, your products. And also don't forget to follow us on social networks. Thank you all and goodbye.